Hello everyone and welcome to another Wardy's Waffle Farm update. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button and also the little bell sound that will alert you when I post any videos because it's starting to get that two videos uh, is hardly enough to get in all the content in a short enough time, uh, all the content I've got. So click the bell sound and that will alert you to when I post a video and you won't miss any. Anyway, on to this week's update and we take a bit of a look at the two areas of uh, wheat that I've sprayed off, uh, one little patch for black grass and one for uh, bromes we take a look at that uh, and also we take a bit more of a detailed look at how we're pulling the brome uh, in the fields up on the light and uh, up on the heath and also this week we've done our haylage our first haylage cut uh, so we take a detailed look at every one of those operations uh, and the amount of bales we get so without any more from me let's get into this week's update and thank you very much for watching got started with the haylage i've got a contractor in here uh, just cutting it it's been a bit of a job with the weather uh, whether to start it or not we've got so much going on at the minute so we're doing it now even though it talks to rain tomorrow we'll leave it down before we move it so i'll just flick the camera around and show you the cutter so it's a nine meter machine got the wildflower margin here you can just see all starting to come out in flower here so we obviously left that down there and the butterfly you can see there flying about all the insects in here is incredible anyway turning around doing a good job it's getting it all it look underneath here underneath there it ought to have been done a bit sooner but with the weather we've been having that cloudy weather and rain a few weeks ago but anyway it'll be get a good lot of bales off this by the look of it just cut this little paddock as well so we've got that done which is good crow there or is it a crow or a pheasant? No, it's a crow there. Bloody things there's no end about. So next in the haylage making process is tedding. And this is really fluffing it out and getting the air in it. And uh, it sort of mixes it all up and turns the bottom to the top. And thanks to Ed Ward, a neighbour of mine, uh, for the uh, loan or invoice of this machine. I don't know what we'll get. Um, but uh, no, our machine, we've got a six row uh, unit and uh, something went wrong with it. And we've got the baler and wrapper coming tomorrow. And we had to get it done tonight. So uh, Ed's very kind of said we can use this one. Yeah, you can see how it's fluffing it all up and just gets the air amongst it. Um, and of course, just remember as well, with haylage, haylage is sort of halfway between hay and silage. So there's still some green in it, but not as much green as silage, and it hasn't gone off as much as it would for hay. So you can see there, a bit of green in it there, which by the time it's done in the morning, uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be in good condition. We only have about 25 acres um, of, uh, of grass all together that's coming into haylage that's all we do so but quite a decent crop here I think looking at it so we'll get it done by tomorrow night finished all uh, baled wrapped and led into the yard it's 6 30 in the morning and the team of black grass pullers are already coming back from the first uh, round They've been up here this morning coming back 
this particular field of wheat, there's two patches of, of uh, sterile brome or bad patches that are sprayed off with glyphosate a bit further across in the field. And they're pulling, these gang are pulling the rest that uh, are dotted around the field, which there is some. Very strange because this field was totally clean last year. There was no sterile brome in here whatsoever. And there's two patches so bad. I'll show you in a second. They have had to be uh, sprayed off. We've got some around the edge of the field as well. Got all the wildlife and the skylarks singing above. So this is the area, or one of them, that was sprayed with glyphosate in this field. You can just see the lighter plant sticking up above the yellow and that's the uh, sterile brome that's dead and obviously it's killed the wheat as well but there's a huge area of a uh, huge lot of brome around that area but not quite as thick where it's sprayed off but they've managed to pull them and this is the pile that's been pulled up to now from around that patch you see the massive amount of seed on these ears and they've only managed to do three tram lines up this side of the field because it's so thick. But the amount of good they're doing is incredible. So here we are, Tom and Reuben done a good job here. Got the sides all pulled in, leveled out, a bit of soil brought in from that bank across there, which we need to get rid of all of that sometime. But no, done a good job here, so we've got to just subsoil this sometime and then level it out maybe with the culture press and seed it down and then also possibly the track we'll get that dug up as well because I'm going to take this Leyland dye hedge out eventually and then this is where we're going to do the house and this is the small area of wheat that was sprayed with Roundup because the black grass, you can see the patch of black grass there, and I know from experience there's just too much there to pull. So it's not a not a big uh, loss in, in yield. And you can just see here is the black grass plants. You can see now when you're looking quite a few just here, waving about. So we've got to get here with the with the team of pullers, but there was quite a lot just here. But again, perfectly rogable, but there's more at the minute in some of these fields we've had for three or four years and it's only because we've drilled about three weeks earlier these are all drilled about the probably 12th 15th of october rather than the end of october but still happy with how things look and our black rust levels compared to when you drive about the country heap of sewage sludge there in the distance we've got in the region of seven thousand tons in storage in fields at the minute and that's all will be spread on the land after harvest this year so I'm back in the field that we've got the brome problem on our light land on the heath and this is the area that was sprayed with glyphosate if you remember uh, two or three weeks ago and you can see here that uh, it's killed everything off but that, that's okay this is how we've actually managed to get rid of black grass over the years as well so this little patch really for the good it's done uh, is nothing so I'll just turn the camera around and, and uh, get a closer look so you can see now the brome has gone brown quite easy to see but this is obviously is rogable we can pull this it's not too much here to pull there's quite a lot but not too much um you can just see now why we sprayed this other area off because in here but because it was done some time ago now the brome's all but they can see there's some of it but it's all gone the same colour, so it's difficult to, to spot it, but it's the same colour as the wheat now. But, um, yeah, all these, these are the ears of wheat, obviously, in here. But there's nothing in here now because the glyphosate killed the plant. The glyphosate killed the plant when it was really small. So there's nothing in here at all. This will just whiz and, whiz and away. Uh, but it was too big an area to, to pull, uh, too, or too thick here to pull. You can see the rogers in the distance, they're outside the sprayed off area and the pulling a bit, so we'll just go and, go and have a look at them. So if we just look in this tram line here that I'm walking in, just see the brown sprayed off brome, that's obviously dead now, not seeding, there's quite a lot in this weeding, this just shows what it's like. 
if we hadn't have sprayed it. But yeah, it's. Uh, I hate to see areas like this, but on the other hand, it's the only way you can deal with this problem. So I don't think it's anything to be ashamed or or um, embarrassed about. I think one or two people don't like it, but it's the only way. When you've got sterile brome that we have to the level of that is, you can see the brown there. It's, yeah, you've got to do something about it. And this is how we tackled black grass years ago. You can see there in the edge of that plot, there it's the brown areas, that's brome. See this tram line, there's a lot of dead brome in this tram line here. I'm trying to show something. So there, you can see that is the brome. It's all dead from the glyphosate. So that's done a good job here. I'm pleased with that. And when you spray areas off, it's always a bit of a job to know where to stop and start. And in a way, that, all that brown amongst there. I just wish we'd sprayed a bit more off. Yeah, I just wish we'd sprayed another 10, 20 metres off here because there's quite a lot just here. And uh, you can see here now in this tram line, that's green, that ought to have been sprayed. I might just have to come back with a knapsack unless they can make sure they pull these. So this is the last of the thick patches, but they're doing a cracking job. Hard work in weather, this, these temperatures. But just looking at the crop, it's, yeah, as I said before, it's too thin for my liking. So we're not gonna get maximum yield out of this, but it is on the light stony soils. You can see there, the stone, but yeah. The last thing we want is all these uh, brome to seed. Before baling, we rake it up into rows. Again, this is the same contractor we use for baling. See how it sweeps all the ground. Tidies it up. There's still a little bit of green in here, which is good. Because that's what we need for haylage. It doesn't want to be too fit. And it's interesting, you can see from this slow motion how the machine lifts the tines up as it goes over the row of hay on the right and then it drops them down. while these types of things have, but it just always fascinates me, technology. It's clever how it works. Collecting the bales, we're just putting a few extra ones. Sorry, we're putting some on this Eiffel Williams trailer because there's two full loads in this field with our Bailey trailer plus uh, some extra. So rather than come back with the tractor, it's just quicker to come with the, with the Eiffel Williams trailer and just and behind my disco and take them back to the yard. Bailing the haylage, we get a contractor in from uh, Nottinghamshire to do this. There we are. Clever. 
clever how the knotting system works on these balers. I've just got a clip. Uh, I'll stitch in here and I'll show you this, but really fascinating how the knotting works on these bales. We, uh, we actually make these bales a bit, uh, a bit shorter than um, normal what these balers would normally do purely for handling and horse people actually uh, horse people actually being able to uh, deal with them you can see here they're quite quite short they're about four foot long four strings in but that's the size of them well compacted you can just see still a little bit of green in but in, in hindsight they, uh, they don't want any more weather on these they don't want to dry out anymore just a bit of dust coming off the baler, but uh, hopefully the time we get it wrapped and uh, a few months, won't be able to use them for three or four months. Um, they, they, they could be all right. The last job in the Hadish process is wrapping them. And again, the same contractor does that. So here's just picking another bale up, turning the bed round ready. Squeezes it and tips it on the bed. There's the roll of plastic. You see it's drifted down there. We put eight layers on our bales, just a bit more plastic than normal. Just gives them a bit more protection. Then he's making his way to the next bale. Ready with that, there's the roll of plastic. Then that grips it, cuts the plastic, and then it rolls off. Ready for the next bale, that turns around. You can see there it's got the plastic there. Bale's lifted on onto the turntable. Then it starts the process again. We've got a red kite just above. Oh, that's great. Look at that. That's, um, they're obviously coming in the field because of the mice that's in here now and I think they probably he came to have a look at Nala and uh, Frankie but there are uh, a lot of mice in here now I think that's what they're doing there's no end about at the minute I'm putting a new roll of film on yeah You can see it's really thin, but with all the layers on it, it does the job. And then when you're starting a new roll, just stick it in the string of the bale and that's job done. Got a few more here ready. And for me, you put eight layers on instead of six. Yeah. And how many revolutions is that of the turntable? Eight layers is uh, 26 revolutions, six layers is 20 revolutions. Right. And look, any idea roughly what on, on the eight layers, what a, a, rat, what a roll of wrap lasts, how many bales you get out of? On eight, about 27. 20, right. So in this field then, for 13 acres, there'll be about 150 bales maybe a bit in here, maybe a bit more. So, sure, that's yeah. Right. And you've had to get some more wrap. Yeah. Right, yeah. Good, that's brilliant. Yeah, well, that's a good size. Yeah, it does, isn't it? Yeah, brilliant, great. Then next job is to collect, collect them. And we obviously pair them up in the field and uh, handle two at a time. 
and Ruben does that when the, uh, to get them right way up because the bales aren't quite square, they're oblong and it's so much better it's if you have them all the same way in the, once you stack them in the yard. It's much better for when we load them on the trailer when we take them out to uh, deliver them out uh, in a few months time next year. So we, that's how we tip them over and then handle two at a time like this. Onto the trailer, and it's good having this long trailer. It's uh, 32 feet long, this one is triaxle trailer. We can get, I think, up to now about 59 bales on. We can get 10 or 11 on the bottom, depends quite on the thickness, but that's what they are. Obviously, we're so near the yard here because the yard's only just through there. We don't need to put the ratchet straps on or anything and just take them in the yard and unload them. So this bale here has uh, either got damaged when we've been trying to load it. Yeah, looking at that, probably has. So it just needs to be re-wrapped rather than put tape on. They never really hold even if you tape them up. So it's just much better. We've got the wrapper in the field still across there. So... When he gets over this side of the field, just to rewrap that, much better. And we've got one or two in the yard actually like that as well that we'll rewrap. Now unloading the bales in the yard. And we'll put them all in one pile here. And then that little stack there is left from this last year. But by the time those this year's are ready, it needs at least two months. So we're going to be now mid of June, July, middle of August. So we're going to be end of August before these really are ready because they've got to ferment and the sugar's all generating the bale and everything. So it needs a time before you can use them. So we'll be on to these and uh, these will be fine. And this will last us another two, three, three months this will until these are all done. The night before the Lincolnshire show, Tuesday night, and we've got a reception here at the showground. So we'll just have a quick look around here. It's all set, stunning weather for a fantastic show next couple of days. There's Rhonda. Get out. <laughs> this is for the members' uh, dining area. Just coming out into the members' area in front of the Epic Centre and the main ring. Looking fantastic. Hello. And here we are. Looks good, Rhonda. We're just over there. And a few, where's that? There, look, oh, it's mutual just through to the right of that tree. You can just see and a few mutual, yeah, great. Good, let's go and have a few drinks and chat to a few people. The sun is setting on the Lincolnshire showground the day before the first show since 2019. And just heading into the NFU marquee. Fantastic, look at that. Some really, really good pop-ups. I love this one. Some of the stats on here about Lincolnshire. Just brilliant. Carvings done by a local farmer. All these will be on view tomorrow.
back British farming. Yes, please. Thank you if you do. Look at this, just brilliant. Well done to the whole NFU and NFU Mutual team. We've got another lorry here collecting all seed rape. Still got a bit left, but not much. There doesn't look a lot there, but it's surprising the width of this shed. It's 18 metres wide there. There's still more than a lorry load there. There's more than 30 tonnes there. It's uh, quite a surprise when you get to back of this, uh, this shed. It's very deceiving. As you can see, a leaf blower makes clearing up this so much easier, so much quicker, much better than a brush. So you can see we've got all the haylage bales in the yard now with 413 altogether here. I think uh, we've got uh, 103.8 tonnes of 27 acres. Uh, I think we'd have got a little bit more than that if we'd done it a few weeks earlier because I think it's just a bit dried out too much. But in tonnage terms or, or tonnes per hectare terms, that works out at about 9.5 tonnes per hectare or in old money, 3.84 tonnes per acre and uh, the bales weigh roughly um, 250 uh, kilograms. So that's it for this week's update. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please come back to me with any questions. Until next time, cheerio.